Hey y'all, and welcome back to Bourbon and Bones. If you're new to our show, welcome. And if you're a faithful viewer, welcome back. If you like what we're doing here, go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe. So tonight we're going to be looking at another Buffalo Trace product, Elmer T. Lee. A single barrel, and there have only been a handful of really special releases from it. So in our Buffalo Trace episode, link here, we talked a little bit more about, we talked a little bit about Mr. Lee in the very beginnings of the Buffalo Trace era of bourbon. So like we said before, Albert B. Blanton first rejected Lee when he first came to, at the time, Stag Distillery, because even when he was looking for work. So a few weeks later, after he joined the company, uh, he actually was hired as a maintenance engineer. Now, before that, he earned his degree at the University of Kentucky in 1949, and before that, served during World War II as a radar bombardier. He quickly became plant engineer after becoming a maintenance engineer, then superintendent, and then the head title of plant, the dual title of plant manager and master distiller. So he brought Stag into the modern era until his retirement in 1985. One of his first one of his final acts as Master Stiller was in 1984. He introduced the single barrel offering of a very modern bourbon in honor of his mentor, Albert B. Blanton. And a few years later, the distillery honored Elmer with his very own single barrel offer offering as well. He was the Master Distiller Emeritus of Buffalo Trace starting in about 2000 and was, was inducted into the Kentucky Bourbon Hall of Fame in 2001 along with being a life with earning a lifetime achievement awards from both Whiskey Advocate in 2002 and Whiskey Magazine in 2012. Just a few weeks shy of his 94th birthday in 2013, Elmer passed away. He did not get to see the incredible bourbon boom that we get to enjoy today, but I do think he would actually have been excited about it. So, let's dig into the little into the bottle a little bit. <clears throat> so, it's a single barrel sour mash Elmer T. Lee Texture of bourbon whiskey, 90 proof. So that means every bottle you get is going to be different because it's a single barrel. I've had a handful of these in my life, about 15 or 20, and they all have very similar similar characteristics because Elmer really built a distillery that produces excellent quality bourbon every time. And so while there are definite differences between barrels, the quality never shifts. You never get a really good one and then a really terrible one. It's always an excellent quality coming out every time. So on the very back, you actually see a little picture of, of him uh, as master distiller. It's really just a great bottle. Very basic, really, for bourbon and very basic for a highly sought after bottle. So finally, let's see how it tastes. So right away on the nose, you get a really nice burst of cherry notes. Lots of cherry, lots of vanilla, oak, very typical Buffalo Trace smelling bourbon. But it's a lot more delicate and more round scent than you find in a lot of Buffalo, not all, in some Buffalo Trace products. On the palate, you get a lot of very savory spices, a little bit of pepper, definitely a nice dark cherry note, lots of caramel and then butterscotch, and a really good tannin leather kind of dryingness on the tongue. It's much more complex than I think a lot of people realize that Buffalo Trace can produce, particularly when you're looking at other products like Blanton's, which is very, very round and very delicate, this actually, for me, has a lot more of a bold character to it. And a little bit longer finish, too. Like, it's still kind of rolling through and it kind of almost ends in a little bit of a nuttiness, almost like a, a really good walnut. Okay, so we're gonna take a quick break and come back and try this again with a little bit of water and see what happens. Well, welcome back to Bourbon and Bones. We are trying Elmer T. Lee tonight with a little bit of water. So let's dig in. Mm. 
All right, so this is this is a weird one. Um, when I first smell this, it reminds me of a field at dawn with dew and a bit of fog rolling across it. It has a really distinctive smell. It's damp, earthy, sweet grassiness. Um, if you have ever smelled that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It just has this fresh, rebirthing kind of smell. Because with a little bit of water, a lot of those initial scents just kind of dissipate to nothing. But is replaced by this very, dis for me, a very distinctive smell of dawn, dew, foggy fieldiness, <laughs> which I don't think you're going to find in a lot of books. But the rye really picks up which is interesting. So you get this um, toasted butterscotch and a really crisp, malty kind of rye and a lot more peppers and anise is coming through and a little bit more of the char from the barrel. So with a bit of water, actually a lot more opens up on the palate on that spice end. And even now as it's finishing, it has, as again, it has that more of that walnut kind of tannic finish. So, <clears throat> The verdict this evening. I have two points to this. One is that this is a $45 to $55 bottle, MSRP. Finding a bottle of this at MSRP is, is nearly impossible. And so, is it worth the markup, the two, three, eight hundred dollars you'll find it for? And the answer is simply no, it isn't. I, there are very few bottles in existence that I'm aware of, that I've ever tried personally, that ever would, would rate that kind of price point. A regular bottle of Elmer T. Lee, for me, personally, is one of these staple bourbons. For me, this is what a great, high-quality bourbon starts at. Everything else is gauged against it. This is either better than Elmer T. Lee, it's as good as, or it's far below. It's a great barometer of how good a bourbon is because this is made incredibly well. It's not the most complex bourbon I've ever had or that I own, but it is one of the most easily enjoyable bottles. And with it being a single barrel, everyone's gonna be, again, slightly different. And I really appreciate that. For me, this is one of the best crafted Buffalo Straits products on their market, barring maybe one or two. And it's a, again, it's a great standard for what I think great bourbon is. So for our final transition tonight, we're gonna to be looking at this little creature. The first one in my collection, the trilobite. Now, there are 25,000 known trilobite species as of today, June 2021. Trilobites were amazing survivors and their reign on the planet lasted from the Cambrian 521 million years ago to the end Permian extinction 252 million years ago. And at the Permian extinction, as we've talked about before, is also known as the Great Dying. Trilobites ruled the, earth, ruled the waters for 270 million years. That is nearly twice the lifespan of the dinosaurs. Or if you want to look at it where we are, it's a thousand times longer than humans have been walking around. Now this specimen I have specifically here is called Clayman Brongenart, first described in 1822. Clayman means beautiful crescent, referring to its Gabriella, which is this little front piece kind of right above its eyebrows. Um, here's a picture of a much better specimen than I have, <laughs> where you can see the curve along the head much more clearly. They are mostly found in North America, North Africa, and Europe primarily in the Silurian Age rocks. The Silurian period lasted 24.6 million years from the end Ordovician to the Devonian extinction. Now, these animals lived in the oceans and they were leaving trackways and burrows that are still studied today because they survived two other mass extinction events 
and as a whole filled every underwater niche imaginable. They were incredible survivors. Uh, some grew vastly larger and were pretty voracious hunters and some were quite small and were probably scavengers or they were um, slightly um, herbivorous, like herbivorous, Herb herbivoric, herbivoric, no, also wrong. So they were also herbivores. One thing I'm excited about is hopefully discovering more trilobites in my digs and being able to show you more and more of their family as time goes on. But for now, we get to look at this survivor in a bottle that honors a great man of Kentucky and of bourbon. So remember, share a bourbon with someone. Good night.